So, sorry about the lighting, this is late night thoughts. So, there's three main things. So, the first is that what's really happened is in the UK, after eight years of austerity, the trans rights activists have kind of demanded a conversation about safeguarding. They've given a visceral demonstration of male pattern predatory behaviour, which I think might be linked to the scalps of a lot of people in a lot of institutions. And I think sometimes we forget that it's the middle of a global thing. So I talk to women from other places in the world all the time, and you know this stuff's really firmly embedded in massive institutions and has massive money behind it. Now, what we've just done can't be undone, and it won't be undone. And crises are often very useful because they show us how things are linked together in a way that we hadn't before. So all of a sudden we have this visceral demonstration of what happens if you have these disciplines that don't have any structural analysis attached to them. <coughs> and what happens if you have a really misogynist little pit bubble on, t on you know, Twitter? You know, there's no doubt anymore that the echo chamber around like, the political press is not safe for women and they deliberately make it unsafe, especially for women with children. So that's the method of political engagement that's been undermined. We forced a recognition of safeguarding systems. Now I know that doesn't feel like much because it's just like the rule of law and we know that this already exists. This is major. This is the beginning of these institutions getting to grips with the existence of these systems. But in addition, this has kind of, you know, we're in the middle of a global thing here. And also, many of the activists that have been unleashed on us, they're quite mentally unwell. You know, these are really dangerous people. And so, I think while it's inevitable, you know, certainly, I think people are quite shocked by the easy win and some people are about to try and capitalise on it not knowing what it is, because it's actually part of a much bigger crisis and a lot of much bigger shifts that are occurring. So what should happen now, I think, is that the easy wins will be, you know, and our existing media culture will reproduce themselves and the same women that helped sell austerity will try and reproduce themselves. I'd just let them, really, just let them. We're in a much bigger situation. Now, I want mermaids out of schools. I want these people out of schools. Our children should not be dealing with, you know, abusive adults inducing dysphoria. and. I think we should focus on that. The GRA consultation is quite important. But for me, something else quite important has happened. So the blind spot that, like, what's always here as single parents is a reflex because it's actually part of natural institutional evolution and it's never been challenged. Well, you all just did that. Thank you. And in doing so, you kind of corrected some stuff probably without knowing it. Now in crisis, it's always worth looking around after major crisis about power relations, which is what this was, and look at what's changed. So what's changed is we have women emerged as a political force. We've got recognition of those systems. We have a visceral demonstration of male pattern of predatory abusive behaviour, which I'm really sorry to say, but we're in the middle of something major, which has attached to the scalps of major institutions who really needed to be brought into line and to kind of recognise the rule of law and democracy. But we're still at an impasse. So British women are at the core of this. And, you know, I think it's quite telling that some of the women that are most at risk and some of the transsexuals most at risk have been pushed to the margins. I think we need to keep an eye on those women. Um, I don't know that we're still at this impasse. And we're kind of at this point where all these crises are coming together and we're kind of at this synthesis point. So we're not going to be at an impasse for very long because the other thing that's happened is the left have been made superfluous. So through this crisis, the vacuousness of the student left has shown up. It's kind of come alongside the anti-Semitism of Corbynism really coming into the fore. And this crisis is illustrating the structure of the culture at you know, the heart of the British left who are really just a bunch of posh kids who are just a bit thick. And that's occurred. So I don't know. I don't know what happens next, really. It's quite interesting, though, isn't it? Um, before I go, solidarity and safety are very much the same thing, by the way. You know, we 
can't do what was done with Percy Parker again. And I would urge you all to go and watch her run that she did today. It's about half an hour run. It's a fucking really long run. I gave it to my daughter, so it's the only lesson in feminism you'll ever need. Actually, while I'm here, this is a message direct to UK trans rights activists. You lost about a year and a half ago. We won then. You were just demonstrating on Twitter now. So you can do your mad internet shit and you can try and get into our Facebook. You were just demonstrating. You've been really useful. Well, we have no further use for you. Um, I think transsexuals need to urgently start standing up for their rights. I think the backlash from this is major. And those people who are still shouting turf, you should probably know that you're in the middle of the biggest major child abuse inquiry that this country has seen in a very long time. And you're shouting to announce yourself in the middle of it. That's probably not wise. I just quite look at my hair, I like my hair on this. I'm going to buy a lamp. Probably not this week, maybe next week. But I'll buy a lamp and I'll light these properly. But I quite like talking to you in the dark at late night. <laughs>